everyone. Here's uh, Mr. Connors um, talking to you through the interwebs using a tool called YouTube. Sorry I couldn't be with you guys in class today, but uh, next best thing, you've got a video of me sharing some information with you, which is in some cases even better because, well, um, you can watch this video as many times as you want and listen to my golden sweet voice over and over and over and over again. Rewind me, play me double time, see if I can sound like a chipmunk, and so forth and so on. But I digress. Let's get on with what we're here for. Um, right now you're watching a video that's going to be teaching you a little bit on how we can use Google Draw to begin making some very basic badges using some tools. In fact, today's conversation is really all about tools. And specifically, um, we're going to be talking about four different tools today, or actually I should say three different tools today. Um, and then in another video we'll talk about another tool, and then we'll mix them all together and it'll be awesome. The first tool I want you to be aware of is something called the selector tool. The selector tool is not just a selector tool, it's also a deselector or an unselector tool. For example, with the selector tool selected, I can select different elements, whether those are shapes, or um, text boxes, or anything else. But um, if I've got something selected and I want to unselect, all I have to do is click outside in this wonderful gray space. Or, as it mentions up here, I could hit escape on my keyboard, and it deselects. The selector tool is an important one to remember because sometimes you're working on something and you want to move something or grab something else and you want to make sure you got the selector tool and not one of these other ones selected otherwise you could end up drawing on top of something and that could be bad or resizing something and that could be bad or moving something and that could also be bad and so make sure you get your selector tool selected. The other tool I want to talk to you about today is called the line tool. It's right here. What's neat about the line tool is yes it does make lines which to be honest with you, if you were in the, the corporate world and you were a, a graphic designer, you wouldn't call it the line tool, you'd call it the stroke tool. I'll get into that more a little bit later. But what's neat about the line tool is there comes in a variety of different types of lines. For example, there's the regular line, there's the line that has an arrow on one end, or you could choose it to have arrows on two ends. There's something called the elbow connector, the curve connector, which are kind of fun, kind of tricky to use. The curve, play around with that one totally. The polyline, I love. It actually makes shapes out of different lines that you create. And then the scribble. I'm not going to go into all of them today, but you should try them all out and see what they do. They're super cool. And then there's the shape tool. Now the shape tool actually comes in a bunch of varieties too. There's your regular shapes, like your smiley face. There's your arrows. Um, you can pretty much find any kind of arrow you need in any direction. Your callouts, which is awesome because they've got these stars in here with all these different pointers. So if you're making something that's in the shape of a star, you could totally use that. Or um, it's got these banner type things. So for those of you who have banners or ribbons at the bottom of your things, you can totally add those on. And then there's the equations. Um, I excel, anyone? Anyways. So there's a selector tool, the line tool, the shape tool. We'll get into those other things a little bit later. But in addition to talking about the tools, I also want to talk about something else. Zooming. Zooming is so awesome. It's super cool. Did you know that you could use this awesome zoom tool to literally click on it, choose it, and zoom in on things? Ooh. Oh. 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 Ah. Oh wait, now how do I zoom out? Uh, well, that's where the zoom to fit tool comes. If I click on that, bloop, I'm back to where I was. This is really great if you need to get into something and make some serious detail, like as if you wanted to, I don't know, add a, you know, I don't know, maybe some hairs on an arm or a hand if you were making a hand in your badge. I don't know. But just know that if you need to zoom in to get some serious detail going on, the zoom tool is going to be your friend. Also, ah ha ha, I didn't use the deselect or select tool. Gotta be careful with that. Anyways, something else that I want to make sure that you're aware of is the fact that there's something else called cropping. When we're done with everything, we're going to actually go through the process of getting rid of all this stuff. We can crop in a couple of different ways, but one of the best ways to go through the pro process of cropping, um, hmm, not there, hmm, hmm, hmm. 
Not there. Mm. Not there. Mm. Mm. Ah, there it is. Eventually we'll be able to go through the process of cropping down our image so that the only thing we have is exactly what we want and nothing else. I'll show you how to do that. And just so you know, if you need more canvas, there's this awesome handy dandy thing down here. You just click and you drag and you get more. And more. And more. Or if you need to get less, you can get less. Ooh, wait, I shouldn't have done that. Command Z. Whew. Anyways, so just so you know, awesome tools there. And um, yeah, so we're going to talk about those. And then we're also going to talk about some other things. If you remember before that I said lines, well, if you were an actual graphic designer using some of those really expensive programs, um, Photoshop, you know, the Illustrator, InDesign, anyone, you wouldn't actually call lines lines, you'd call them strokes. Um, lines are just a stroke. And shapes, well, they're stroke lines plus something called fill. See this shape right here? This is a rectangle. It's got the stroke or the line on the outside, and on the inside is the fill. And both of these have certain attributes, which we can talk about in just a little bit. What else do I need to say? Oh, that's right. All these lines, all the shapes, and yes, even text, they all have these default attributes that we can change for good or for evil. For example, you'll notice I have this shape selected, and for example, the default fill color is white. Well, the default line color is black. Um, there's also something called line weight, which is technically the thickness of the line, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, lines can also be dashed, which is kind of neat. And yes, we'll get into that text later. Um, for right now, just know that each shape that I create has some default attributes to it, color, thickness, or weight of the lines, and so forth and so on. And we can use these things to our advantage. However, for right now, let's go ahead and make a simple badge using some very simple shapes. Um, we just had a special day the other day called Valentine's Day. So I'm going to go ahead and quickly make a Valentine's badge. I want to go ahead and start off by making a wonderful circle. Um, if you were to go and make a circle um, and just draw it diagonally, it would make a perfect circle. Or if you don't, you could make it oblong or an ellipse or however you want to call it. If you actually hold down the shift key, it's this magic button, the shift key, while you drag it will always make it a perfect circle. Cool. Now you'll notice when I do that, there's a couple of different default things going on here. Yes, I do have an outside border or line. The stroke is black by default. But you'll notice the fill isn't white. Well, they do that for a reason. They want you to be able to see it, so in this case it's some off blue. I've got my selector tool selected. I can go ahead and move it to another location if I want to. I can go ahead and resize it by grabbing these handles. I can go through the process of even rotating it. Notice the percentage degrees. That's really cool. Look, I'm going to rotate it 360 degrees. Can you tell? Mm, not really. Circles don't work that well. Anyways, I want to actually go ahead and make a change here. For example, I want to go ahead and change the thickness of the outside border to 16 pixels. Notice how thick it gets. That's kind of a neat thing. And I want to change the inside fill color to, oh, I don't know, white maybe? There we go. Now, the badge I want to make is actually going to be a Valentine's Day badge. So simply, I'm going to put um, something in the middle. Hmm, what could I put? I know, there's got to be a shape in here that would make a lot of sense. Ah, there you are. Now, I can go ahead and drag and draw, and notice I can make it taller or wider, or again, holding on the shift key, making it perfect. Notice when I do this right there, it actually gives me some type of an indicator that something's happening. That's actually making it perfectly sized so that if I were to move it and drag it, notice this is super awesome, these guidelines that pop up are actually telling me when that is perfectly centered. Oh, isn't that cute? Of course, no Valentine's Day heart would ever want to be a light shade of blue, so yeah, I'm going to change that to red. That looks better. How about we change the thickness of the line and make it, oh, um, the way the line make it eight? I like that even better. Now, I could leave this just the way it is, and it would be perfect. Um, but maybe I want to make a change or something along those lines. Maybe I actually don't want that black line on the outside. Well, 
if I actually changed it to the color of the fill, you wouldn't actually see it. Or if I really wanted to, I could actually change the color of that stroke to transparent. And it pretty much does the same thing. Either way, if I make it the same color as the fill or make it transparent, it won't look like it has a border, even though it does. Up to you. One thing I am going to do, though, is I'm going to play around with this. For example, I could choose my Valentine's Day badge to have one heart. Or maybe I could make my Valentine's Day badge have two hearts. So I could, I don't know, take this heart, maybe um, copy it. Um, maybe I could then go up and paste a second copy. Oh, that's kind of cute, yeah. Now I've got, oh, they kind of really kind of blend into each other. Maybe having a border is not such a bad thing after all. If I take that one to make that one black, and I take this one and make that one black, then you can see them a little bit better. Now I've got two hearts. Oh, now that's a really cute Valentine's Day badge, isn't it? What if I did this? What if I actually took this heart and I made it black? Wait, wait, just, just listen to me here. And then um, I took this Valentine's Day heart and I actually did something called ordering it. I want to send it backward. I'm just going to put it behind this one. You're going to laugh when I do this, but watch this. I'm going to take this heart and move it so it's almost right over that one. And now what does it look like? Almost 3D. What I've just done is I've created what looks like a shadow in the background. It almost makes it stand out a little bit. Although I do want to actually take this and move it to the very center. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use my selector tool to select it and move it. Oh, i got to grab both of these. Man. <coughs> Excuse me. That's a problem. So maybe what I can do is actually take both of these. And let me get perfect. And I'm going to go through the process of introducing one more concept today. And that's grouping. I'm going to select this one. Hold down Shift. Click on that one. And then I can go up to Arrange and Group them. Now when I move one, it moves them both. Isn't that awesome? Now if I really wanted to get crazy, I could do something along these lines. You ready? I'm going to actually ungroup them. Group. And I'm going to go through the process of adding in a special line that's an arrow. Um, maybe I'll have my arrow go this way. There we go. Now, wouldn't it look better if maybe the thickness of that line was, oh, I don't know, a little thicker? Ooh, too thick. Maybe I'll make it this thick. Well, that's pretty good. But wouldn't it be a better arrow if it was actually, you know, like, behind it? Well, yes. What could I do? You know, I could use my selector tool, and I could send it um, order send backward. Now, that looks pretty sweet. I just wish I could do something to the end of this. Hey, check it out. These arrows have some different things over here. So maybe I could actually change the end of it to look like that. Or I could change the end of it to look like that. Now that looks kind of neat. What if I needed to make it longer? I bet I could click on this and drag it out a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, easier on going with this. Awesome sauce. So ladies and gentlemen, you can spend some time fooling around with the basic shapes and what we call those attributes of those basic shapes, changing the length, the size, the color, the thickness, the weight, and all kinds of stuff to make some seriously awesome things. Oh wait, there was one other thing I wanted to do. Yeah, I wanted to crop this. So I'm going to go up to, um, what was it? Oh yeah, I needed to select everything. <gasps> Ooh, that's not good. Hmm, select everything this way? Yeah. Wouldn't be a bad idea if I probably grouped everything together. What do you think? Maybe arrange and group? Yeah, that's good. Now, I do want to do that crop. I wonder how I'm going to do this. Hmm, maybe I don't need this stuff anymore? Oops. Maybe I have to select the entire thing to delete it. There we go. Now, can I crop it? Hmm, maybe I have to select everything. And then, can I crop it? Well, Sounds to me like I need to learn how to use this crop thing first. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Wish you the best of luck. And um, I'll see you in the next one. Aloha.